get us started, let's take a look at the problem of the day we've got here. It says the measures of two consecutive interior angles formed by parallel lines are represented, my goodness, that's a mouthful, by 5x plus 24 and whew, 4x minus 15. We're going to solve for x and the two angles. Got all that? Let's try it one more time. How about the measures of two consecutive interior angles formed by parallel lines are represented by 4, 5x, excuse me, plus 24 and 4x minus 15. Jumping a little ahead there, we're going to solve for x and the two angles. All right, let's take a look at this one. It's got a little bit of work. It's all about geometry, I believe, here. So let's take and draw some parallel lines in here and see what we're actually looking at, all right? Looking there goes a line. We'll make another one. We'll make those horizontal so they really work easy for us. They're probably going to have to drop out the lower third, guys. There we go. And we'll put some lines there. And we do know that these little characters are running parallel. That's why we put those extra ones there so you know they're parallel. Otherwise, you're assuming, and that could be a bad thing, although it did say in the problem we are going to be dealing with that. Now, we got to have a transversal to make any angles form. Obviously, these lines do not intersect. So let's pull in some transversal action. I really don't know how wide that's supposed to be because we don't know what X and the angles are yet, do we? All right, so there's your drawing. There we go. Now, let's see what we can do on this. First of all, we got to identify what kind of angles are we talking about here. Same side interior, two consecutive interior. Basically, you hear both of those phrases when you talk about the angles we're mentioning here. So consecutive interior means they're inside the parallel lines, all right? So we're looking at pairs that are inside, and consecutive means they're on the same side of the transversal. So I am going to take a gander that we have 5x plus 24, maybe the bigger one, and 4x minus 15, just because if x is any kind of a positive value, which it would have to be in order to make this work, so this is going to be minus 15, this is going to be plus 24 there with 5x and the 4x, all right. What are we going to do with those? They sure don't look congruent, all right? That's one thing we know. They have to be either congruent or supplementary. So this is the case where we have the two angles that are going to add up. Their measures are going to add up to 180. They are supplementary. So let's set up a problem out here, okay? Set up an equation. How about we got 5x plus 24, and we're going to tie those into 4x minus oh, 15. And that's going to add up to 180 because that's what happens with supplementary angles. That's what they do. They add up to 180 degrees, all right? What do we do? What do we do? Well, we've got a lot of things we need to do here on this, I guess, because we've got a lot of stuff hanging out on the left-hand side. Let's condense this. Let's take 5x and 4x. That is 4x. Every time I try to rewrite it, it looks worse, doesn't it? We get 9x out of that because they're like terms. Let's also go ahead and say 24 minus 15. All right, we got a plus 9 going on there. Why? Because 24 minus 15 gives us 9. And on the right-hand side, we still got our 180 that has not been affected by all the hoopla going on on the left-hand side. We need to get x by itself. We got a couple of 9s that are standing in our way. So let's start off and get rid of the first 9, which is the plus 9 part here. To do that, we're going to subtract 9, and we've got to do it to the left. We also have to use the subtraction property of equality to subtract 9 off the right. So here's what's happening. I get a 9x. I get a, wow, how about this, 171. A little mental math there. That's pretty easy to think about that. You lose 9 out of 180. Think about your money. It gives you 171. We're talking about degrees, right? I know, I know. So we're going to divide that 9 into 171. Some of you may want to go to your calculator for that. We've already going to, we're going to look at that. I think it will go in there 19 times. All right, let's hit the calculator just to make sure. Because I've been known to mess up live on the air before, right? Yeah, yeah, you know. All right, let's see what happens here. We're going to take that and divide it by 9. I believe we're going to get 19 this time. Yes, we do. All right, so x equals 19. So that's half the battle. The other half of the battle is let's figure out what's going on in the angles. So we're going to take... 5 times 19, and we're going to tack on 24. That's going to give us an angle. We're also going to take 4 times 19, and we're going to subtract 15 from that result, and that will give us the other pair of angle. All right, so let's see what happens here. I've got 95 plus 24, which I'm getting at 119. That looks good. There's one of our angles. That's the big one, and we did put it in the right place, so good news, good news. Over here, we've got 76. We're going to subtract 15. My goodness, that should give us, looks like, how much? 
What would we say? Oh, that one's easy. 61, right? So put those together. I'm out of room, aren't I? <laughs> 119 plus 61. We do get back to 180. So those are our numbers right there. So we have right here, if I just say 119, that's degrees. We've got 61 right here. I'll put a little double tick there because it's different. 61 degrees, kind of messy, I know, I know, but that's how we work it. Now, what's going on? I, I said find the two angles. Let's go one step further. Let's find all of them. So we're going to have vertical angles throwing us up to 119 here. We're going to have vertical angles sending us to 61 degrees here. See the vertical angles? Those are vertical angles. And you know what? These other guys, because they're parallel, are also going to be 61 and 61. And how about 119 and 119 here? All of these are degrees. All of these are degrees. And they look pretty happy, all right? Notice what I said at the beginning. Everything, if lines are parallel, everything basically is going to be either congruent or supplementary. And if those happen to be perpendicular transversals, they'd all be 90. They'd all be congruent and supplementary. But that's how you look at the pairs. It makes it a lot easier. But you got to know what do we mean by the lingo, the lingo chair, all right? Consecutive interior, there they are on the inside, and also you might hear them called same side interior, but there it goes. Everything works. Great problem of the day to get started off with here, all right? It was kind of long and wordy, but you can work through those things.